These cars are old as hell, so you need to upgrade your grounds. Your grounds can cause all kinds of electrical abnormalities, and if you're thinking about upgrading anything, you want your sensors to work correctly. So one of the most overlooked things when upgrading a car is upgrading the grounds. I'm going to be using cable cutters, 4 gauge welding wire, half inch heat shrink, 4 gauge 5 16 spring connectors, 4 gauge solder slugs, a butane torch, and a utility knife. For this application, I'm using welding wire. Don't go to Home Depot and buy household grounding wire. This wire does not have enough strands to be rated for high amperage and you're just asking for trouble. The reason why I chose welding wire is because it's pure copper, has high conductivity, low voltage drop, it's highly flexible, and it's oil and water resistant insulation. If you don't think it matters, then hey, go for it. I'm going to be grounding the alternator, the cylinder head, and the battery. To make room, I'm going to disconnect and remove the battery. The engine block ground can be found underneath the oil filter. And this can be traced all the way to the negative battery terminal. I'm going to be using this location to ground since I'm going to relocate my battery to the trunk. This way the engine block will be grounded to the frame. I measured and cut with cable cutters. Definitely invest into some $6 cable cutters, because if you don't and try to cut with something else, you're just going to have a bad time. Cut and remove the insulation to expose just enough so that it can fit into the ring connector. Put the ring terminal in a vise and insert a solder slug. Using the butane torch, I'm going to heat up the ring connector. As soon as you see the core melt down, you can slowly insert the cable so that way the solder makes a good connection between the ring connector and the cable. I left it in the vise to soak up the heat so it could cool quickly. The solder connection is super tough. Next I cut some heat shrink tubing. This will insulate the exposed strands and can be removed easily later to inspect for corrosion. I fastened the cable and ran it parallel to the factory ground as well as zip tied it to keep it in place. For the alternator, I used a bolt on the rear casing, then ran the opposite end to the frame. You can also use this factory ground point if you choose. The cable on the left leads to the head. It's super tight to get back there, especially if you have your heater core installed. It's best to do this before the swap. As an alternative, you can ground the intake manifold. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, uh, you know, just like, share, and comment. Tell me what you think. Also, don't forget to subscribe, because I'll be doing my battery relocation next. See you next time.